So it's been a while since we've had the misfortune of reporting on YouTube drama because we are a much more serious and also funnier news program than the other ones out there, maybe like the Philip DeFranco show. But when we're not trying to instigate drama in order to receive viewership from DeFranco defenders, even though we literally have nothing against the guy, we typically try to avoid news about YouTubers because the phrase itself feels antiquated. We're aware yeah. that there are people who still are considered YouTubers or consider themselves YouTubers, and there's probably an entire generation of creators that operate with massive fan bases that we don't even know about. Oh, there absolutely is. Yeah. Uh, at pretty much any time something like the thing we're about to talk about happens, I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Who is this person? I don't know. Anyone oh, they that's... have like a hundred million subscribers. Yeah. Okay, well, I, you know, despite being on YouTube, I follow like maybe five channels, and the rest might as well not exist. Yeah, I mean, sorry, it's just <laughs> we're just not interested in what YouTubers are up to, no. unless it's Mr. Beast saying something stupid. You see, I guess, he's but... getting he's getting yoked. That's right. And, he, uh, he's, he... and he's honking his hog yeah, on the he, timeline. Yeah, he shared a nude with his uh, underage <laughs> fan base to show how yoked he's getting. But Mr. B I, look, I'm proud of him for losing the weight. He was uh, he was overweight. A lot of people are saying that he wasn't obese, but he he was overweight. I said this about Robert F. Kennedy yesterday, and I'll say it today about Mr. Beast. I don't want to see you with your shirt off. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Like yeah. I don't care if you're fat or not fat. I don't want to see. Keep it. the shirt on. Uh, so, Mr. Beast is different though. He's inescapable. He's a celebrity that rivals Hollywood's biggest stars, so he is hard to ignore. And also easy to make fun of. And now, we almost lost him on that submarine. That's right. Uh, having said all of that. One of the original YouTubers, whose face alone is synonymous with the term YouTuber, has been embroiled in scandal recently, and it just bubbled over into the mainstream consciousness in the weirdest way possible. So we're going to keep this <laughs> pretty, brief. pretty brief. But the backstory here is that Colleen Ballinger, a.k.a. Miranda Sings, a.k.a. that character with that weird lipstick smeared <laughs> all over her face. I'm going to stop playing this. Uh, prop comedy. We did yeah. it. We did prop comedy, uh, folks. I, I'm so mad about what she did to the ukulele. It yeah. didn't deserve this. Ruined it. They should ban her from traveling to the state of Hawaii. You for can life. only play Somewhere Over the Rainbow on that thing. It's what it's made for. But yeah, so uh, Miranda Singh, she's got that lipstick. She's making the face that you make when you hear the term YouTuber. Uh -huh. um, she was recently the recipient of some grooming allegations yeah. from some former fans who accused her of inappropriate interactions with them, both online and in person, while they were underage. Uh, the allegations don't seem to go further than that, meaning there was no assault or no touching, but they, they were still uh, very bizarre interactions that included adult scenarios with young fans at live performances, followed up by sexual innuendo and what appear to be questions of a sexual nature directed at young fans in group chats online. Um, coming from a, an adult woman in her 30s. Yes, and uh, apparently just a lot of weird oversharing of her personal life and yeah. just strange. So these accusations, they go back as far as 2017, but they were recently brought back to light after another YouTuber shared their experiences with her. And we're not sure if Colleen Ballinger is still a prominent figure in the industry overall, or even on YouTube, but we're going to assume that she's nowhere near as large of a presence as she was previously, because that was inescapable. That period of time, they gave she had her a Netflix, Netflix show. show. Yeah, they, yeah, they put her on billboards. Yeah, it, wild time. Back when YouTubers were on billboards, while uh, when YouTube was pumping all of that money yeah. into things. Uh, now, a cursory glance at her YouTube page shows that she's pivoted into, uh, pivoted into being a family vlogger channel where she periodically makes content related to raising her kids. Fine. Whatever. The views, not bad, but nowhere near the level that Miranda Sings was on. These allegations were certainly a big piece of news online, but it was contained within a bubble of people who'd either grown up watching her or continued to follow her career, and everyone else was just like, oh, that lipstick lady. Uh, she did something terrible? The girl from Wreck-It Ralph 2. Yeah. Unfortunate. But things went thermonuclear on Wednesday of this week when, despite the apparent insistence from her PR team not to acknowledge and respond to the allegations, the Miranda Sings lady uploaded one of the most bizarre and outrageous apology videos 
in the history of online content creation. Well, they don't call her Amanda Talks. No. She's Amanda Sings and... Miranda. <laughs> Am yeah, which shows just how, how much we've followed this woman's career. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. That, the joke would have been better if I'd said it correctly, but she sang. Yeah. She didn't talk. She, her apology was in the form of song. Yeah, there was jokes going around that, that said her PR team said she couldn't uh, speak to the allegations. Right. But that didn't mean she couldn't sing them. Theater kids. Not even once. That's right. <laughs> um, and also, uh, she didn't apologize. I would not in any... This is not this an is apology. This is not video. a fucking apology. This is a weird uh, double down... Uh, I I did everything right and they indicted me. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Yeah, not this an fucking, apology video. This is this wild. Is, yeah, this is a, like, uh, dodging allegations and saying that Actually, I'm the victim almost. I'm going to get out ahead of this with a little bit of musical theater. Yes, and, and uh, this is also uh, <laughs> very similar. I, I never even saw this video until this week because it was brought up as a comparison. Oh, the girl who did like the interpretive yes. dancing? Yes, yeah, I, I completely yeah, missed I don't that. know who the fuck that is, but yeah, that was weird too. Yeah, I watched that and I was like, huh. If only I had seen that before this Miranda Sings video, I would have thought this was the weirdest way yeah. to apologize. Previously, my uh, knowledge of YouTuber apologies was just that they all started with someone being like, hey, guys. This almost starts with that, but it's even weirder. Can you play classical gas on that thing? No. Now play classical gas. No, I wish I could. Yeah. You need a six string classical guitar for that. I mean, I'm sure there's a, I'm sure some people have pulled it off on the uke, but. Classical gas seems like you'd want six strings instead of four. Why do you have that? Uh, it's, it's a fun instrument. Yeah. It's very easy to learn to play. All right. And um, yeah, as long as you're not an annoying weirdo about it, it's, uh, <laughs> it's fun. It's, yeah. uh, there's nothing wrong with the ukulele. Again, everything, everything you hate about the ukulele was imposed upon the ukulele and is yeah. very unfair to the people of Hawaii who created a lovely instrument that has, just been, has tunes. been ruined by mainlanders. Just feels great when you're on the beach and someone actually breaks one out and uh, plays something nice on it. Here in America, though, nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, at this point, um, the pseudo-apology video is basically its own genre of content, and obviously the format has been pretty stale for a while now. Yeah. Colleen Ballinger, despite the severity of these accusations against her, found a way to somehow break the mold while at the same time bringing more attention to the claims than really ever before. Mm -hmm. uh, just really stry-sanding herself. Yeah, this has so uh, many elements in it. It's like the apolo the, the non-apology video, the stry-sand effect, yeah. musical theater. Because I had, I had seen... Comedy, a little bit of comedy. I had seen like sort of posts kind of related to this controversy over the last few weeks on Twitter, but like not really looked into it too much. Cause I'm like, like, oh, that community will take care yeah, of itself. Yeah, I don't know like, what the fuck any, like what's yeah. anyone talking about? And like now, this now is something, it's inescapable. It, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so this is in like variety and fucking mainstream news outlets because it's, you've done the wrong thing here. Yeah. Yeah. This is basically an ad for why you should have a PR representative don't they? Who? She she d apparently and she mentions the fact that they said don't speak about it. I would I would imagine. So I say. I would imagine those reps are having conversations right now about possibly firing their clients. This is the biggest you've ever been. Congratulations, Miranda. So uh, yeah, she has cemented herself as the most millennial comedian of all time in in many ways. I do love all the th people pointing out like this is the most millennial way possible to apologize. Breaking yeah, up the ukulele and like. You know, time passes, time moves, and I'm starting to see what the Gen Zers see. Like, we are a cringe generation. Absolutely. And I love all of the videos. <laughs> I, I don't have TikTok, but I see them come on, on Twitter and Reddit. Uh, uh, just dunking on all the dumb, dumb shit we did over the past, you know, the height of millennials' uh, yeah. influence in entertainment and everything else was the past 10 or 15 years. Yeah. I saw one the other day of the, uh, the uh, uh, mustache finger tattoos. Oh, yeah. oh, hello. Yeah, I, I saw... I'm a quirky millennial woman. I, I have saw, a mustache on my finger. I saw some posts of like a, a party attended by Zoomers in their mid-20s, and it was a millennial theme party where they came dressed up as millennials. And like... Hey, my, which Hogwarts house are you? My brain is so fucking broken that I'm just like, what are you... They just look like normal people. It's like, <laughs> it's like when the Europeans do yeah. American parties. But like, like, yeah, cool. But he, yeah, uh, but yeah, a lot of them had like the fake mustache tattoo on their finger and uh, yeah. Yeah, we're I, a cringe generation. It's over for us, folks. Yeah, Stop trying wear, to be cool. Can't wear skinny jeans anymore. Yeah, 
If you're a woman, uh, you you, you got to have the big. You got to part that hair right down the center. If you part it on the side, old. Yeah. Um, and those and your lady jeans better come up to here. This is what I'm saying, and, and I remember saying this, no joke, back in 2010, because I remember hanging out with the Machinima crew back then. These these are all guys, video games and maybe some college and no real life experience. Yeah. Back then, if you look at a, a photo, back then. I look exactly the same. Yeah. Jeans and a, and a black band t-shirt. Yeah. And I've dressed like that since high school. And it's never gone out of style, and it never will. It's the default. The, the tightness of the pants might come and go a bit over the years. Sure. Depending on the style at the time. But uh, you can't go wrong with a graphic tee and some pants. Just a little tip for the youngins out there. Yeah. yeah. So back to millennial comedian uh, Miranda Sings. Um, yeah. What's it? Colleen Ballinger? Colleen Ballinger. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as we've alluded to, she broke out a fucking ukulele and started singing a song about how sorry she was during a video with a runtime that is uh, really uh, <laughs> perfectly, <laughs> perfectly calculated to go just long enough to push it into YouTube's recommendation algorithm. I don't even know if people were still doing this, but it is. This is it's still the most, in the meta. Like millennial antiquated YouTuber thing possible and there's all these pauses in it too like she's like looking at the clock she's like did we hit 10 minutes yet should i sigh again just her husband on the side just stretch it out <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah a video concept and execution so outlandish that it instantly spilled over from youtube and the people who care about this yeah. into the greater internet as a whole hitting everyone on social media like a bat to the face <laughs> as they held their phones up to their faces to ingest this surreal uh, performance art, yeah. possibly unintentionally performance art. Yeah. And we're not entirely sure what we can actually show you in video form. Even if we just use stills, you're, you get the picture. She's just sitting there strumming her ukulele. Yeah. Um, and speaking entirely in song. Uh, but yeah, chances are you've seen this thing already anyway. Yeah, and there'll be it's hard links to miss. Below if, Suffice to say, it starts out strange and devolves from there. Everyone who was aware of what had been happening the past few weeks saw a new video pop up from her and just a simple title it said hi and also a sad looking thumbnail. All right, standard. Everything's pretty standard at hi, this point. Guys. So she's going to acknowledge and apologize. And she sort of does that, but just completely av avoids any blame and talks about how this sucks for her. Specifically. Yeah. Though all of that is completely pushed aside by the absurdity of what's taking place on screen. The video starts with her looking around sheepishly, saying nothing at all, and then just grabbing her emotional support ukulele from the corner, kicking off a little ditty about verbal diddling and how it's wrong, but also, you know, people are being unfair to her or something. The whole thing's wild. She basically cranks out a 10 minute original song as a non apology apology video and what she takes 10 minutes to do is summed up in just a few seconds thanks to Skatey420, one of the best content creators, with her take on Miranda's apology video. So just check this out instead. I'm so sorry that I groomed a bunch of kids. Yeah, that's... uh. Kind of says it all, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but she didn't hit that 10-minute mark, so the monetization is going to be kind of bad. the perfect length for Twitter.com. Yeah, so that... That happens. That happens, and I I prefer to not hear any more about it, but I don't know if that's going to work. Safe to say that red lipstick not coming back. No. Yeah. But another less consequential video trend that went viral this week was the Grimace Shake. Literally killing people. Mm -hmm. um, so, quick backstory. Um, it's apparently Grimace's birth. Okay, I'm gonna need to explain who Grimace is. <laughs> well, I get into it a little All bit. Right, yeah. yeah. So it's it's Grimace's birthday. Yes, he has a birthday, and it seems like it's it's been his birthday for weeks now. He's like a one of those millennial women. That yeah, has, <laughs> I was just gonna has say a birthday month. Yeah, it's uh, a, Grimace is essentially like a twenty year twenty eight year old white woman. Hey, but, well, it's uh, my birthday week. Uh, so yeah, uh, McDonald's has released a meal to celebrate this character's big day, week, <laughs> month, despite not really referencing him at all for years because, I mean, he's just kind of a big purple thing. He's, he's supposed to be a milkshake or something, but I, he's just a big purple blob. Yeah. He's, uh, if you watch the other two, he's, he's McDonald's' globby. 
There you go. The first unapologetically gay character. No. <laughs> uh, well, uh, no, it, much like the Babadook of previous years, Grimace has been tied directly to Pride Month because of his birthday yeah. aligning with the celebration. There's been fan art. There's been everything. So which, Grimace is now a gay icon. Which gay like uh, archetype would Grimace fit into? What do you call like, uh, bears? Because they got like bears, otters. Like what? What would the Grimace be? If you're gay, you'll let me know. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, the Grimace. It was it was a different time back then. Everyone was on LSD when they came up with this cast of McDonald's characters, which they've kind of been hiding in the storage closet for the last 20 years or yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone actually memeing on this ever lived during a time where the Grimace was like a regular fixture on McDonald's commercials. Even Ronald! They've had Ronald, they're like, okay, Kids are actually scared of clowns now. Yeah. It's bad for clowns. Let's also, put, they got rid of, the, the, well, at least sidelined him in main advertisements around the same time that Joe Camel was killed off. Like, look, you can't have children's mascots pushing things that are unhealthy, like cigarettes and McDonald's food. Well, you know, you can you can get the kid apple slices instead of fries now. Now, so. yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so... Another example. Another, yeah, look at the history of Mac tonight. So this is the moon-faced spokesman. I believe he plays a saxophone as well. Or maybe... Piano. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I had a little Mandela effect thing there. Yeah, and and uh, the, the there's an interesting backstory about his musical career as well. So uh, yeah, uh, Mac tonight, he played the piano. He was the mascot for McDonald's' late night menu from the 1980s. Um, this is actually far more interesting and weird than it has any right to be. It was a character that was co-opted by the alt-right movement a few years back, uh, right alongside Pepe the Frog. Pepe, obviously, they got a lot more mileage out of. Yeah, there's, but this whole Mac Tonight thing was birthed from McDonald's doing a parody version like a of Mac, Mac the Knife by, is it Herbie Hancock? or It was some like old Yeah, it's one of those old standards. Yeah. They call it back the night. I can't play yeah. it on the ukulele, otherwise I totally would. But that's how it spawned out of this. There's uh -oh. a there's a whole defunct land episode about this. Oh. Yeah. Well. Very interesting. Anyway, but back to the Grimace. Yeah. So he's a big purple The Grimace. <laughs> he's a big purple thing, I guess. And it's that thing's birthday. And the marketing campaign They them Grimace. The marketing campaign has done a <laughs> great job because they've embraced the weirdness of it and released a purple milkshake that you can only get if you order the whole Grimace meal. Yeah. Apparently the shake tastes like vanilla with a hint of fruit, according to Review, Review Bra. Bra. Yeah, he said it's a uh, uh, your it, source for all fast food related uh, his, takes. His obviously his videos are untouchable. The perfect YouTuber. Yeah. He's uh, tried everything, so he would know if yeah, it's good or not. He said it's uh, it's very vanilla dominant, oh. but with a uh, with a berry back. I'm and he wore a purple tie for the review. I'm literally gonna go get one of these right after we, <laughs> right after we film. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, but yeah, so McDonald's is bad for you. We're not trying our best. We're trying. We're not trying to sell this here. Yeah, I mean, do what you want. I just said I was gonna go get it right after we do this, and I probably will. I'm gonna because I'm curious. It. Yeah, yeah. It's purple. <laughs> You'll let me know how it is. Still it reminds me of another purple drink. <laughs> that's a little harder to get your hands on. <laughs> you can make it. You can make your own uh, with the Grimace shake. Uh, although I think they keep that stuff behind the counter now mm. for for those exact reasons. <laughs> Careful out there, kids. Still, this uh, this whole campaign has taken on a life of its own, seemingly inspired by the absurdity of the character itself and the fact that it even has a birthday. Plus, abnormally colored food always seems to do well for at least a brief moment. Now, the campaign went viral for a completely different reason over the past week or two, though, because thanks to a viral video on TikTok, which then led to hundreds, if not thousands, of copycat videos with evolving, or in some cases, devolving levels of some creativity. Some people really went for it, though. Yeah, the Grimace Shake promotion has reached levels that even McDonald's probably didn't think possible. And then, speaking of PR, they're probably having a, a weird conversation behind the scenes of like, well, we can't ever endorse what's happening, <laughs> but they're yeah. getting the word out. They, they can't acknowledge or support the viral trend yeah. because the entire trend is about how this shake will fucking kill you. There, there's the original video which shows someone drinking the shake and then the video cuts to them lying dead with purple stuff around their mouth. And obviously various versions and variations of that started popping up shortly after, with a lot of them getting more elaborate and extreme as the trend continued to gain steam. So yeah, there's some pretty dark versions of this out there. Some even have like special effects and practical effects. Some play more like comedies, some play like horror movies, but the sentiment is the same throughout. Do not drink the Grimace Shake. 
it will kill you, and it'll leave you in a pool of purple death goo. I saw one that was impressive where the girl takes a big sip of it, and then her nose starts bleeding yeah. immediately with purple blood. Is that the one where she's like walking on the ceiling afterwards? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, how? This is actually like some pretty impressive. There's stuff. some dark ones too, where like a guy drinks one and then is hanging from a bridge. Oh. So yeah, obviously McDonald's does not want to promote or even acknowledge a trend that indicates that their product will poison you. But they're also probably enjoying the massive boost of engagement and sales as a result of this TikTok challenge. Uh, it sort of reminds us of how Fago, for years, refused to directly acknowledge their skyrocketing sales as a result of the insane clown posse yeah. um, building a lot of their identity around Fago and the fact that they uh, spray dozens maybe even hundreds of bottles of sugar-free Fago into the Diet crowd. Fago, yeah. Because yeah. if they use the sugar one, that that's how you get ants. <laughs> yeah. I got sprayed. It was great. Yeah, had a great time. So yeah, the story goes that uh, they would send ICP Christmas cards every year thanking them for their business. But that's as far as they went to even admit that ICP was almost certainly responsible for a majority of their sales outside of Michigan. So whoop, whoop. 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 McDonald's finally did break its silence late this week, though, and did so in the least direct way possible by having Grimace attempt to ignore the fact that he's committing Grimacide on a massive scale by serving his cum or whatever it is to would-be patron patrons. <laughs> they just posted a very innocent-looking photo of Grimace and said, Me pretending I don't see the Grimace shake trend. Yeah, okay. Keep drinking my juice. Yeah. Committing grimacide. Compound V. It'll turn you into a McDonald's mascot. That's right. Fun fact. Fun fact. A few months ago, I was driving out to the desert, and I decided, hey, I got some time to kill. Why not stop at the original McDonald's location from the 1940s over in San, beautiful San Bernardino, California. We love San Bernardino, don't we, folks? Uh, where the skies are blue, and... Uh, the ground is brown. Uh, yep. Dusty. And I mean, Sam, flat. it's a big county. There's some nice places. Beautiful mountains. Um, yeah. Lake Arrow is a lot of great nature in San Bernardino. If you get off the ground, <laughs> get above it, sea level. <laughs> if you've ever seen the movie The Founder, I, I liked it. Uh, you, I, it was really good. Yeah. You'll know the history of McDonald's. It's intentionally misleading because of Ray Kroc, who took control of the brand and turned it into the behemoth it is today. But back then, it was just one little burger shack. Uh, now, Kroc eventually ran the original brothers out of business after opening up a McDonald's. I mean, he franchised it, but then he ran their specific burger shack out of business by opening yeah. a regular brand in McDonald's across the street from the original. Both of those have been closed for a long time at this point. But on the site of the original McDonald's, they have a little museum filled with artifacts from the history of the company. And so I went there. I checked that out. I saw, I saw some old Happy Meal toys that I had forgotten about. I just memory hold them, and I was like, I used to have that. It's, a, you know, it's fun. Yeah. There was a bunch of old uniforms and stuff from throughout its history. They had the original milkshake mixer. Oh, the one that Ray Kroc sold to the McDonald's yeah. brothers? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but then I turned a corner. It's a labyrinth in there, after all. I turned a corner, and right there, stood before me, was the corpse of Grimace themselves. The desiccated husk of the yes. Grimace. Well, that's not, the Grimace, every year the Grimace sheds yeah. his outer skin, so. That's, I did see one of the like replies. A, like I tweeted, tarantula. I tweeted about this, and one of the replies was like, that's just the skin he shed. He's at least two to three times bigger now. <laughs> so yeah, folks, I have seen the Grimace, or his skin, in person. And it's not pretty. Yeah, and that's what'll happen to you if you drink this Grimace shake. Also, I'm this, so excited. This a museum if you do ever go visit it i will never visit it's a fun little roadside attraction <laughs> okay. uh but the guy who runs it he's clearly just an enthusiast yeah so leave a donation please oh oh it's not like an official no oh he's well, just an enthusiast that's they should they should help him out come on i don't know i don't know the the original the the the, the oldest still operating mcdonald's is in downey so if you want the original mm. experience, like the walk up with the big arches everywhere, that's yeah. still operating in Downey. I think it's 1950s. So okay. it's, it's, you know, it's 70 Beautiful years old. Downey, California. Yeah. Beautiful. It's, you look at a map and... There it is. There it is. In the middle of all that, all these other towns. Downey. Beautiful yeah. Downey. If you're ever in the area, make uh, sure you stop in Downey, California. I couldn't tell you. It's 
right there. I've it's driven south through of, it. It's south I, of downtown. I've driven through it probably thousands of times. Couldn't tell you a single thing about it. You know what? Downtown. I'm going to go get the Grimace shake from the original still standing McDonald's yeah. in Downey, California after this. Yeah. I'm going to go hey, you two got hours any, out of my way. You got any traffic. Grimace skins back there? What? You know. The Please Grimace. leave us alone. I don't get paid enough. Anyway, now that we've talked about food, you should probably avoid uh, if you're trying to stay healthy. But you, you know, if you're not trying to stay healthy. It is what it is. Uh, that has provided us a lead in, though, a natural lead in to our sponsor for this week's episode, which is, is food that you should eat if you want to eat well and stay healthy. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about Factor. Now that it's summer, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for sunny, active days. Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. With Factor, skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Then get back outside and soak up the warm weather. Looking for calorie-conscious options this summer? Try delicious, dietitian approved calorie-smart meals with around, or less, than 550 calories per serving. Need an extra boost to support your wellness goals this summer? Try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. Get swole like Mr. Beast. That's right. This week I had a stuffed pepper casserole uh, and a, and a go-to for me now, the chicken tetrazzini. Chicken it's fun to tetrazzini. say and it's delicious to eat. Uh, elevate eating at home with their new upscale surf and turf at, or surf and surf meal oh, options wow. like roasted garlic filet mignon and shrimp and Cajun spice shrimp and salmon. Choose from 34-plus chef-prepared, dietitian-approved weekly options featuring premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. Plus, you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45-plus add-ons, including breakfast items like the delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, and potato bacon and egg breakfast skillet. Or, for an easy wellness boost, you can try refreshing beverage options like cold-pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. This June, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered right to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash newsdump50 and use our code newsdump50 to get 50% off your first box. That is code newsdump50 at factormeals.com slash newsdump50 to get 50% off your first box. Okay, back to the news now, and yeah. we are thrilled to inform you that it looks as though the short-term rental industry led by companies like Airbnb, might finally be failing so badly that people could be forced to, oh no, sell those homes that they bought for no other reason than turning it into a poorly run hotel to people who actually need a place to fucking live. Be a real shame if that happened, Oh right? no! Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, Airbnb has sucked for a very, very long time and has at this point become more expensive and certainly way more annoying than staying in any traditional hotel motel, holiday inn, uh, res or resort. Uh, yeah, outrageous fees. You got to do fucking chores, potentially get spied on. And they, the, the spy cameras are getting very advanced. Uh, also, you got to like sweep the fucking room like you're the secret service. Well, those are technically illegal and putting it in a common area, uh, I, I think is still illegal, but you can, you can anywhere outside the home with audio recording oh, and everything right. yeah. is completely fine, which is, I get it, but also, I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, just all these rules and restrictions and awkward check-in and check-out procedures, and then the constant worry that the host is going to like just hit you with some surprise charge after the fact because you didn't straighten out the welcome mat or some shit. Yeah, it sucks, man. Uh, I still use it when I'm going places that are kind of... Off the beaten path. Some of the places don't have a lot and of hotels. if I'm yeah. traveling with my dogs. Although, I found this website called bringfido.com that is actually really good at finding actual hotels mm -hmm. that allow dogs. So, mm. yeah, don't really need it anymore. Airbnb is uh, always... It's in, insane how <laughs> much shit costs. And, like, yes, you can check the box to, like, show the, the full price now. But it's still, it's outrageous. Like, it'll originally say, like, oh, $100 a night. And that's like, oh, but that's also, like, for each day, there's an extra $100, like, hosting fee. Like, what the fuck is that? 
Anyway. Yeah, Airbnb was originally a great idea. Someone who had an extra room in their house or their apartment. It was or, couch surfing. You know, yeah, or someone who was going to be out of town for an extended period of time. They could rent out that extra space at an affordable price to someone who didn't need all the amenities of a hotel or resort. I mean, the main selling point was that you, you sacrifice some privacy or comfort for a bargain price in a city that you either wouldn't otherwise be able to afford to stay in or you want to take the money that you save and spend it on things that you're doing there. Yeah. And originally it was for conferences. It was like people were in town for big conferences that would sell yeah. out hotels in the immediate area and people would offer open rooms that they had for people to stay in. Since its inception though, and along with multiple other companies rising up in the space, it's turned from an extra option for budget conscious travelers into an entire separate hotel industry, which has not only had a negative effect on the actual tourism industry, but a drastic, drastic effect on the housing inventory and pricing in most cities. Yeah, the amount of uh, Airbnb like units in the country is like fucking insane. I saw, I saw someone like laid out the facts on Twitter like the other day. There was like in Phoenix, I, I think it mentions it in one of the articles we talk about here, but in Phoenix it was like available housing units, 800. Uh, short-term rental properties, like 18,000 or something ridiculous like that, or 1,800 yeah. or something. And, uh, yeah, the people doing this, they're all the fucking... They're the same people. It's They're landlords, but they're landlords plus the hustle grind set. They're bad people yeah. in a lot of cases. I've stayed at some nice Airbnbs where it was like the back house of someone's home, yes. and they were cool. But, yeah, a lot of these places are just people buying, like, 10 fucking There's, houses and just turning them into yeah, short-term Yeah, and especially here, like, if you go to, like, Joshua Tree, there are Airbnbs that are, like, experiences. Like, it's a whole thing oh, yeah, I've and everything. Some, I've stayed in some very cool ones. Uh, one of the places yeah. I stayed at in Joshua Tree had a whole, I had a little, literal fucking bocce ball court there you in go. the backyard. And, like, you can't get that at a hotel. Yeah, yeah you can. <laughs> mm. Anyway, if you live in a big city or at this point anywhere, yeah. you're probably aware of more than a few vacation rental homes near you that sit completely vacant when they aren't being used temporarily by guests. Those are homes that could permanently house, um, I don't know, anyone. Yeah. But they've been taken off the market by speculative buyers who fill them with crap furniture, ugly interior aesthetics, live, laugh, love, and they charge people to stay in them for the weekend while they're in town for an event or just any reason. Yeah. It also raises the prices of other houses in the area because the homes are considered investments instead of places to live. And because the inventory is being reduced by turning them into tiny hotels, the prices go up for anyone who's looking to actually permanently lay down some roots. Yeah. So it fills us with great pleasure to report on the fact that the short-term rental market appears to be collapsing. Oh, while discretionary spending in the tourism sector remains high, which means people are just fed up with Airbnbs. Yeah. And the people who own them might be looking to exit this passive income experiment in the near future. Oh, no! Here's, uh, here's Market Watch with more. Nick Garrell, CEO of Reventure Consulting, late Tuesday tweeted the below chart from short-term rental data and an analytics group, All the Rooms, that showed revenue per available listing dropping by nearly 50% in some top U.S. cities. The data highlighted the change in that revenue, RevPal, calculated on a three-month average basis between May 2022 and 2023. The biggest decline, 47.6%, was reported for listings in Seaverville, Tennessee, hometown of country music legend Dolly Parton and her Dollywood theme park, as well as a shopping destination in the foothills near Great Smoky Mountains National Park. A similar drop in revenue per available listing was seen in Phoenix, while the resort town Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, saw a 45.1% fall over the one-year span. On the lower end of the scale, the Florida destinations Panama City and Orlando saw nearly 35% drops in revenue per available listing. Though uh, some in the industry dispute the data, although the, the disputes that I saw were still pretty significant drops, they just weren't as significant as this guy's okay. numbers. Okay. In, the, in the best case scenario, they're dropping by like 10% or 15% or something. Hey, which I'll is, take uh, it. Oh yeah. Don't and take I hope this it, from me. I hope it grows. So yeah, the article continues. They add, in a Twitter thread, Gerald drew a line between Airbnb and the housing market using all the room's data to show how Airbnb and other vacation rentals by owner listings are at roughly 1 million versus just 570,000 properties for sale in the U.S. housing market. Yeah, that's, that's what I was talking about mm -hmm. earlier. It's ridiculous. This, he said, would create huge home price downside if struggling Airbnb owners elect to sell. Oh, no. <laughs> 
it would be a real shame if uh, housing was more affordable. Uh, he reasoned that fewer people are now working from home and vacationing in states like Montana, Texas, and Tennessee, he said. He said owners also may not also be aware of what he called a pending Airbnb crash, noting that Phoenix has 18,000 short-term rentals, but just 8,000 properties for sale. Okay, so there you go, yeah. Fucking ridiculous. With, with revenue down around 50% for the former, it creates a cocktail for massive forced selling, he said. And I, I do love, uh, I don't love, I fucking hate that uh, one way this is being framed is like, hey, this isn't just bad for Airbnb uh, people. This is bad for all of us because it's going to drive all of our property values down. So we should be against it. I'm you like, shouldn't care about your property value if yeah. you're living in that for the rest of your life. Exactly. I, I bought my house last year, kind of like right before the shit fell out. And it's like, yeah, it's probably worth slightly less now than when I bought it, but you're I, not moving. Are I'm you? not <laughs> planning on moving. I plan to stay in this house for a long time. So who the fuck cares? Yeah. Like property, especially in a city like LA is always going to increase in value. Unless... And even if it doesn't, you have a place to live. Exactly. And it... your and your mortgage doesn't change. Yeah. Even if it completely flatlined, there is inherent value in having a home that you live in. <laughs> yeah. And you can't just write that off. Yeah. Anyway, with available housing numbers being consumed by short-term rentals, we can only hope that this downward trend, no matter how significant or maybe insignificant, continues. And also, folks, hotels don't make you take out your own trash and spend your entire final few hours of vacation meticulously cleaning before being filled with anxiety over whether or not the host considers your work satisfactory enough not to charge you. Mm -hmm. And still charges you a cleaning fee regardless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get new towels every day in a hotel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You just throw them on the floor. <laughs> that means just, I want new ones. Yeah, I want new ones. I threw it on the floor. You know what that means. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, don't leave a hotel room trashed. Don't be a trashy person. But Airbnbs suck for so many reasons. It's time to leave them behind. It was a little experiment we all did. And on paper, it sounded like a good idea. But the consequences was exploited. have been yeah. very bad for everyone. And uh, yeah, no, uh, everyone should have at least the opportunity to own a home in this country if they, I mean, regardless, but especially if they're working, uh, if they're gainfully employed yeah. and shit like Airbnb is making one of the harder. key factors making that way harder than it fucking should be. Way harder than it's ever been in any other generation. So good, good riddance. RIP Bozo, hopefully. Whatever you can afford, but even if it's just 10 bucks or something like that, leave it for the, when you check out of the hotel, you leave it right there for the, yeah. the that's clean up after you. Yeah. Just leave it there. And don't cross picket lines. That's right. Uh, speaking about robbing people blind though, we were as surprised and delighted as you were last year when news broke about an armored car jewelry heist because we just assumed that stuff didn't really happen yeah, anymore. It's, it's a it's novelty. Yeah. Uh, at least on that big of a scale. but. Guess what? New old timey crime just dropped because someone just robbed a Las Vegas casino for over a million dollars in broad daylight, all by themselves. No help needed in maybe the silliest way possible by posing as the owner of the casino and simply asking the cashier for a million dollars to pay off the local fire department. Is that something they do a lot? In, I need a million dollars. They've got extinguishers and alarms. You know that annoying beep we keep hearing? Yeah, they're going to fix that for the low, low price of $1 million. Huh. All in large, unmarked bills, please. I mean, it worked. You can't argue with results. So many Oceans movies look really dumb right now. I mean, all those elaborate plans, those teams they had to put yeah. together. Why waste all that time and planning and effort when you could just pretend that you own the place and ask for a $1 million? $1 million, please. Get fucked, George Clooney. Yeah, try hard. But yeah, that's apparently exactly what happened at the Circa Hotel and Casino in old Las Vegas recently. Um, by the way, wonderful hotel. It's the only place I stay at now. Circa? They have the It's the one with the gigantic sports book pool. Uh -huh. So it has the humongous screen so playing can, sports on so it. So I can gamble in comfort. Yes, in the pool. Uh, that's that's actually a pretty cool setup. The inside's pretty nice, too. I like, I like the parts of Vegas where they are open and honest about what what Vegas <laughs> is all about. You're here to camp. Yeah. yeah. There was that dumb period in the 90s where it's like, oh, Vegas, is that, you could do all sorts of things here. And it's like, no. Also, it's a complete nightmare right now because the entire strip, all the road is uh, uh, being destroyed and redone for the F1 race. So traffic is just a nightmare. 
Anyways, here's Vegas outlet KLAS with more. A man is accused of posing as a Las Vegas hotel owner and convincing a casino employee to give him more than $1 million in bogus payments for fire safety equipment. Documents the 8 News Now investigators obtained Monday said. Eric Gutierrez, 23, is charged with... <laughs> 20... <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Oh, oh, sorry, I'm the owner of this casino. <laughs> I'm two 23-year-olds in a suit. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> Eric Gutierrez, 23, is charged with theft of more than $100,000, record set. I mean, they gave him money. On June 17th, <laughs> Las Vegas Metro Police responded to the Circa Hotel and Casino in downtown Las Vegas for a report of a possible scam, documents said. A person from the hotel's security office told detectives an unknown person had contacted the casino cage claiming to be the owner of the hotel and asking for $320,000 for an emergency payment to the fire department, police wrote in court documents. Police interviewed the cage supervisor who said they received a phone call from a person who claimed they were the hotel's owner. Hello, it is me, uh, the uh, owner. <laughs> Wallet inspector. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Circa. Yeah. John Circa. That's this right. Is my my family's hotel. I'm gonna need uh let's see first payment of three hundred thousand dollars, easy. Oh, that was easy. Yeah. Hey, how about about uh six, oh. six, six, let's make it a let's make it a clean million. Unfortunately, the fire department called back and they said they're gonna need a lot more money. Yeah, they're really shaking us down. Yeah. Those firefighters. <laughs> so the article continues. The person who was not the hotel's owner <laughs> said the fire department needed to do a check on the fire extinguishers. And they would need a payment for further safety devices. I mean, it's, a lot of, said. it's a lot of fire extinguishers. That's right. The cage supervisor brought the money in four installments to the unknown person at different off-site locations. Wait, what? Document said. The payments totaled $314,000, $350,000, and $500,000, plus three smaller deposits, resulting in a loss of $1,170,000 to the hotel, document said. There's something else going on here. Yeah. Wait, so there was multiple locations where this happened? And like, they, yeah, we don't want to do it on the hotel floor, you know? They never... This, yeah, this is... Something else mm, going on. Yeah. The employee believed she was on the phone with the hotel's owner and texting with her manager, police said. Documents also indicate she believed she was meeting with the hotel owner's attorney. Well, there you go. I wouldn't believe that a 23-year-old owned this hotel, uh, but I would believe that a 23-year-old is the <laughs> acting attorney of the owner of this hotel. Yeah, how long does it take... To finish law school? Well, who cares? No time at all. Yeah. Police arrested Gutierrez at a gym on Sunday, June 18th, they said. So one day later, open and shut case. Hmm. They later recovered nearly $850,000. That doesn't add up to the... Uh, okay, some money still missing. Police did not know as of the writing of his arrest report last week who was given the outstanding 314000 So that's still out there. It's a down payment on a new Airbnb. <laughs> I got a lot of ideas on how to spend this money. <laughs> a judge, Amy Ferreira, set Gutierrez's bail at $25,000 and ordered him to stay away from Circa and the Fremont Street experience if he postponed, document said. Does that include the zip line? I believe that includes zip, Zipzilla or whatever they call it. That's bullshit. Slotzilla. Uh, yeah, but I do love that the judge is like, okay, if you do get out, you have to promise to stay away from the hotel. The one that you robbed, specifically. I mean, listen, it was a very clever crime you did, so we're not going to, you know. This is a big learning We're not going to be curve weird about it. Hotel. You, you, you swung for the, the fences, and, and it worked, so. That's right. Cool crime. You get, you, your bail is $25,000. Just stay the fuck away from Circa <laughs> for now. Hopefully the very dumb cashier isn't disciplined too hard, because uh, it is wild that there weren't more checks and balances on this cage that was giving out the money. It sounds like the manager was involved. I don't know. Yeah. I'm suspicious. If if these facts as presented are true, uh, this this cashier uh, is only the second dumbest uh, employee this yes. week. Yeah, the janitor. Yeah, I mean, what's worse? Giving away over a million dollars in money to just some rando who claims they're the owner of the place you work at or uh, destro accidentally destroying a million dollars. Uh, 25 years of scientific research because you didn't like a beeping sound both related to potential beeping sounds yeah and both crimes worth about the same monetarily yeah. if you are ever in the area and looking for something uh to do that's not gambling i highly suggest the uh that market no 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 the the uh neon sign museum oh yeah all of the cool. old vegas neon signs are now in a neon sign graveyard and it's really close to fremont street 
uh, and especially go at night. Yeah, and then go check out Thunder Down Under. <laughs> They're back, baby, and they've got the butts to prove. That's right. Regular Vegas is. Uh, I was there recently, and it's, it's it's not great. But old Vegas, thanks to Circa, I can't say enough. Great, great hotel. Wow. Anyways, uh, yeah. Finally today, what year is it? Oh, did I just wake up from my nap? Am I Rip Van Winkle over oh, here? Oh, geez, Rip Van Winkle, you got a lot to catch up on, buddy. And I've got just the song for you. Fallout Boy is back in the headlines again. But it's for the... Well, it's, it's kind of funny. It's Look, this is their song, not mine. So I'm going to say it is a funny reason. They decided to cover a Billy Joel song, but update it with events that have taken place since the original song, We Didn't Start the Fire, took place. Honestly, they probably should have avoided a lot of these topics... I get what they were trying to do here, but it just doesn't come off right, especially when it's a band like Fall Out Boy doing no, it. No, this is outside of your uh, repertoire, your wheelhouse, guys. This is a band who's... Look, I'm sure a couple of their songs are very serious, but this is a band who is not a serious band. They're, look, they make great music. They've got a massive fan base. Their name is from a Simpsons reference. They're not the band to be doing this type of... Yeah. Yeah. song in this type of way but look they tried they went for it they really did go for it uh definitely a bold move to create what is essentially a weird owl parody of an original song and then weave back and forth between serious topics like george floyd and then funny topics like japanese prime minister shinzo abe being assassinated what does george floyd rhyme with metroid metroid that's right shinzo abe blown away yeah, we obviously can't play the song, but just reading the lyrics, yeah, let's read some lyrics. is a very <laughs> wild ride. And we're only going to cite just a few select notes here because, really, it demands to be heard. Also, keep in mind, uh, the original Billy Joel version of We Didn't Start the Fire was chronological. Yeah. Everything he mentions is in chronological order. Yeah, a much smarter songwriting. This play. song, no. It is all over it's the place. All over the place, and things of George Floyd. They do like deep fake right after it. Um, it is strange, and it's like they don't even have to put out a, an apology song because this is the non-apology song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, here's some here's some lyrics. Captain Planet, Arab Spring, L.A. riots, Rodney King, deep fakes, earthquakes, Kurt Cobain, Pokemon, Tiger Woods, MySpace. Doesn't rhyme. More war in Afghanistan. Cubs go all the way again. Obama, Spielberg, explosion, Lebanon, Unabomber, Bobbit, John. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a John Bobbit uh, reference, in, reference there. in there. For all the kids. We'll just switch the name around. Balloon Boy, War on Terror, QAnon, Trump gets impeached twice, Polar Bears got no ice. <laughs> ISIS, LeBron James, Shinzo Abe blown away, Meghan Markle, George Floyd, Burj Khalifa, Metroid. Wow. World Trade, second plane, what else do I have to say? Oh, God, that is just such an inelegant, uh, just... Guys, World Trade, second plane, what else do I have to say? I don't know, you could have said that, like, any other way. Hey, what else it's do I just, there, say, the, Like, if you're, clearly, if you're, if lyrics aren't your strong suit, this is... But was... they are! Like, the, the Fall Out Boy is... A, a decent band for what they are. They're a good band for what they are. They met their match. And they typically, I mean, I haven't looked back at their catalog in a while, but I feel like they had some, uh, you know, pretty clever stuff going on in those lyrics for a while. Did they do The Lifestyles, The Rich and Famous? That's Good Charlotte. Did they do um, uh, uh, Abortion, Abortion, Abortion? I think that's some 41. What did Fall Out Boy do? The this ain't a... Yeah, they did that. Okay. They did, uh, this ain't a scene, it's a goddamn... Okay. Um. I don't think I've... They, uh, they did that song that took the riff from the Munsters. They did... Uh... Look, they had a lot of hits, all right? No, I'm sure they did. Yeah. I, I know the name. <laughs> I'm aware of the name. Uh, yeah. So there you go. All right. Well, they, they gave it a go, and... Um... Look, their name's back in the news. And I hey, think they're probably on tour right now. This is probably going to do wonders for the ticket listen, sales. Listen, as bad as this song is, it's still better than um, the reimagined version of Papa Roach's uh, uh, Cut My Life Into Pieces by Ronnie Radke's band. Uh, 
Falling in reverse? Yeah, falling in reverse. Uh, what's that? Is cut my you life. can't even mention that guy's name without a bunch of weirdos showing right. up in the comments. So please. It's like when we mentioned fucking, what's that band? Oh, I don't even remember. But the, I, the, I know what the you're crypto band. Yeah, 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 the crypto yeah. metal band. Avenged Sevenfold? Yeah. yeah. Apparently their new album was fine. Oh, well, I'll buy it on the OpenSea NFT marketplace. There you go. So, yeah, bravo, Fall Out Boy. Basically a TLDR of the last 30 years in song form. An educated emo population is a good emo, emo population. Right? Anyways, that's it for this week's very music-focused... Ep- get, the, get the ukulele out. Play us out! I'm just going to do that's the one chord that Colleen Bollinger... Amanda sings. Amanda sings. <laughs> All right, that's it for this week's very music-focused episode of News Dump. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. We've got 249,000 subscribers now. All we need is you. Watch our other videos, they're about a janitor who deleted a flu. I'm tired of this. Yeah, I'd just like watch our stop. other videos, they're up there. It's getting old, I'm gonna smash you're tired. We, we, we literally spent an hour talking about like three topics, so yeah. we'll let you go. We'll be back with we, well, Weekly Weird News. Uh, th- be careful with the fireworks out there, folks. I almost added it, but uh, the con- maybe you can put it in Weekly Weird, the Consumer Safety Bureau. Oh, baby. They did their uh, yearly videos about blowing people Love up. It. Watch our other videos, like the video, subscribe. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.